All right, so today I wanna to talk about managing humidity in your snake enclosure. And specifically, I wanna talk about the difficulties in managing humidity in with ball pythons. And I remember when I first started keeping ball pythons, you know, people would say, all right, the humidity needs to be basically between 50 and 60% in the ball python enclosure. And it's, it was really a challenge for me because here in Colorado, the humidity is about 10%. As a matter of fact, I had a, 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 one of those humidity gauges and the lowest it would go was 16 and it was always stuck on 16. And they say most of the time it's about 10%. As a matter of fact, it's so dry here that if you come from somewhere else where there's a lot of humidity, a lot of people will get, you know, will kind of get nosebleeds from the dryness of this desert climate here in Colorado, which is kind of interesting. And when I first started, you know, it was, it was, I was trying to dial in the humidity between 50 and 60 percent. And I thought, wouldn't it be nice if I had some kind of a humidification system, kind of like a reptifogger, where I could set it on a controller and control the humidity that way but it's not really practical for all these racks I have behind me I have you know hundreds and hundreds of tubs of snakes and it's not really practical so you know the, when I first started uh, I, I pretty much went to whole room humidification which was another challenge in itself so I actually had a humidifier in here and added water to the humidifier every day and I found that I was actually going through about eight gallons a day keeping this room about 60 percent humidity and then, then the thing is is i'm on well water up here in the mountains so the, the the problem with that is i was hauling water you know down the stairs every day every day and it was it had a lot of minerals in it from my well and probably one of the best options you could do is if you had a reptile room like this would be to have some kind of a reverse osmosis system plummet directly into your humidifier so it's on a, a continual re refilling system and do it that way. And I thought, you know, <laughs> it'd kind of be nice to do that, but that is a pretty big expense. You know, plus you're replacing the, the reverse osmosis filters all the time. And then if it leaks, you have a flood all over the place. So I decided not to go with a system like that. So what I do now is I essentially, um, I, I use a little watering can and go through each tub. And I went through different substrates. And, and let me tell you, based on the substrate you use, the humidity can really vary a lot. So most people, if they really want to save money, you can go to like, a paper substrate like just regular newspaper or some people use like an unprinted use paper or a butcher paper something like that and the problem with the paper is the humidity so what I was actually using was these little moss balls and it was, it was like a, a sphagnum moss uh, wrapped in uh, some kind of a netting I was actually using netting for fruit you can also use like uh, like uh, like a pantyhose kind of a netting and just wrap up your sphagnum moss and then you can take those little moss balls soak them in water squeeze them out and <laughs> talk about squeezing oh come on Bobby <laughs> and you can squeeze them out and I was actually using those for a while and the problem is with 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 a paper substrate is that it doesn't absorb the smells like uh, like a coconut husk substrate and it doesn't and you're kind of always chasing the moss balls it really only lasts like a couple days here in the dry climate every two or three days I was chasing all the moss balls through all my tubs and it was it was quite a bit of work plus using a paper substrate you're always chasing the snake pee and the mess and everything and it's 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 a lot more work plus I definitely had a smell in my reptile room you could definitely smell the snakes from you know there's nothing really to absorb the smells you know from the snakes going to the bathroom and the tubs and it kind of smelled like kind of smelled like snake pee in, in this reptile room when I was using papers but it was inexpensive and I've tried so many different things. I actually went to like an aspen bedding. And aspen doesn't really hold the moisture as much as it'll hold a little bit of moisture. But the problem is, is it will mold quite a bit uh, earlier than a coconut husk substrate. So I would say uh, probably, you know, the, I, I'm pretty much the coconut husk substrate, the chip, is what I consider the, kind of the ideal substrate. And I've pretty much switched my whole collection over to that finally after, you know, doing this for quite a few years and trying different substrates. 
and it really helps to hold the humidity and it tends to not mold as much as some of the other substrates. So one of the problems is, I would say, if you're using a coconut husk chip, there are a couple of challenges, I would say, and one of them is getting the right amount of moisture in the coconut husk. You can actually overdo it or you can let it dry out. And if it dries out, then it kind of uh, breaks up. And, and I can kind of go through some tubs and show you, you know, some of them. I actually have one tub where I put too much water in. I'll show you what that looks like. I have the tub that Bobby is in here, and it is actually dried out. And I want to show you what uh, a, a tub looks like when it's dried out. And there's a lot of people that actually only add water and humidity to their tubs right before the snake is going into shed. And if you take a look at Bobby here, he is ready to go into a shed and he's actually doing really well. Some, some snakes get pretty grumpy going into a shed, but you can see he's definitely losing some color. And look at his eyes. His eyes are like all grayed up right there. You can see that he's definitely going into a shed. And uh, so essentially what I'll do is I'll go through all my tubs and right before the shed, I tend to increase the amount of humidity. And most people will say, you know, normally for ball pythons, you should have between 50 and 60% humidity. And then when they're going into shed, you should bump it up to 60 to 70%, which is kind of interesting. And it helps them actually shed. And if you don't catch the, the, the dryness right before they go into the shed, you can have a stuck shed. And I've had some snakes that kind of have continual stuck sheds that it seems like for, for whatever reason that particular snake just does not shed very well. And even if I really boost the humidity, it still doesn't shed very well. But I would say in, in most cases, they don't really need the 50 to 60% humidity. You can actually go quite a bit below it and the snake will be okay. But the problem is I also noticed that if you go too dry, so, so for example, if I let the tubs completely dry out here and it's below 10% humidity, it seems like a lot of my snakes will go off of food, which is pretty interesting. And a lot of times they'll crawl over to the water and, <laughs> and kind of soak in the water. That's another uh, indication that you don't have enough humidity in there. And then on the flip side, if you have too much humidity in there, what happens is, is number one, you can get mold. It's probably the biggest problem. And even with this Pro Coco coconut husk, I would say I get a little bit of mold kind of towards the end of the month. You can see kind of like a surface mold on some of these. And essentially what you do at that point is you just have to go through all the tubs and put new substrate in there. And it seems like it holds up pretty good for almost the whole month until you get towards the end. And the interesting thing is I don't really like to compare products. I don't know if I had a few bad blocks of Reptichip, but I got, you know, five or six blocks of Reptichip and it molded right away. And I couldn't quite figure out uh, if it was just, you know, a bad lot of Reptichip. And then I switched over to Pro Coco and I really haven't had that problem. As a matter of fact, I had a, a couple tubs that molded pretty early on this last Pro Coco. So I think, you know, it really depends on the different batches of the substrate. Uh, so, so a lot of times you can keep them at a really good humidity and most of the times you won't have a problem with mold if you're using the coconut husk. So for, from here, I kind of want to go through uh, some of my tubs. And I kind of want to show you what it looks like to have too much humidity in there and then the perfect amount of water in the substrate. And then I want to show you, for example, Bobby's enclosure, which is really dried out. And we definitely need to add some water to his enclosure. All right, so Bobby lives over here in this rack. This is the tub that I currently have him in. It's actually could be quite a bit bigger because he's a pretty big snake. I'm working on actually upgrading him to a bigger tub at some point but if you look at the substrate in here you can see that uh, if you kind of uh, actually down on the bottom there's a little bit of humidity you can see there's a pretty dark color you can see it's a little bit dark but you can tell how kind of fluffy it is it is pretty dry and what you really want to do is you want to add a little bit more humidity and what I use is this cute little watering can. I went through pump up sprayers and everything and finally what I did is I went with this little watering can and that is about as quick as it is and that is about how much water I use for an enclosure like this. 
And when I'm adding water to the tubs, I always like to make sure that the water is about, you know, lukewarm so you don't kind of freak the snake out, pouring really cold water on the snake. And that is, it's, it's really hard to tell how much that really is until it soaks in and you come back the next day and kind of look at it and feel it and see how much humidity is really in there. All right, so I have a female ball python over here. This is one of the ones that laid eggs this year and she is in this tub, normal female number four. I actually have four normals that I breed and they're really good breeders. Normals I think are underrated sometimes. And if you look at the amount of humidity in this tub, uh, <laughs> It might be kind of hard on the the device you're looking at as far as you know the contrast in the color, but you can see that the top of the coconut husk is kind of a really dark color. And and what I did is I put too much moisture in here, too much water, and what it did is you can definitely tell the top really should be kind of dry. Like over on this side, you can see it's a little lighter color, but over here in the middle, it's it looks like it is you know, a lot darker than I like to see, especially if you dig down. I, I kind of like to see the dark underneath, but I don't like to see the kind of the wet coconut husk up on the top. So kind of my idea is, you know, to keep it damp underneath and then kind of have a dry layer up on top to where if you dig down, you get this dark color, but up on the top, it's a lighter, drier uh, coconut husk. So they can sit on the dry stuff and the humidity slowly comes out from underneath and you really don't get too much humidity all the time in there. So essentially what I do on this, you can either just kind of let it dry out, you know, by itself is what I'm kind of doing on this one. Or, you know, if you get too much water in there, what you can do is you can take like half the substrate out and put some new drier substrate in there and kind of mix it in. Or, you know, you can even, you know, if you had another sink that was too dry, you can kind of mix them and go back and forth and do it that way. All right, so here is another ball python. This is a pastel female. She just laid eggs not too long ago. And this is about the perfect amount of humidity in a tub as far as I'm concerned. So really what it is, is on top, it is really, uh, really should be dry up on top. And then if you dig down into it, you can see it's definitely wet underneath. It's not really soaking wet, but it definitely is wet underneath and dry on top. And that is, about the perfect amount of humidity. And it really dries out back in the back. What I like to do is I like to kind of have a clear spot in the back so they can sit right on the hot spot and they're not kind of insulated from the hot spot on the bedding so they can, they can maintain that specific temperature. And then what I do is I bring some of this bedding up here and kind of bring it around up front here and then you know if, if it's really dry and crumbly in the back because it dries out over the hot spot what i'll do is i'll just you know bring some up to the front i'll take my watering can and just kind of wet it just real lightly over on the top all right so up to now we've been talking ball pythons and here is a different snake this is a completely different snake this is my corn snake this is big red here and he just shed, look at how beautiful he is, beautiful looking snake. And the interesting thing about corn snakes is they really don't appreciate a higher humidity. Uh, uh, pretty much, you know, most of the time, unless they're coming up on the shed, I would say any snake that's coming up on a shed, they would appreciate the boost in humidity just to help them shed. Other than that, uh, they don't really need it. But on this one, you know, I do keep, if you, actually if you dig down in here, I pretty much keep it a little damp on the bottom. And the only reason I really do that is <laughs> because it really keeps, it really keeps the uh, the coconut husk kind of in a, a solid mat. And if, if you let it completely dry out, what happens is the snake will essentially burrow through the mat and it kind of fluffs up and crumbles. And then you kind of lose your snake in the coconut husk. <laughs> they kind of dig down in there. And I really like to keep enough humidity underneath is so you know it kind of forms that mat and really you know uh for something like this i would say in order to do that you'd probably want to use a thicker mat in here you know i use a pretty thick amount of substrate in here you can see it's not really as as damp as a ball python it's got a little bit of humidity in here but it's it's a little bit drier and it's a little bit thicker so I can have the humidity and the, the moisture underneath the substrate and it doesn't keep the enclosure so humid in here. 
So if you have a reticulated python, I would say retics are probably pretty similar to ball pythons where they appreciate kind of a higher humidity. It's, it's you know, I've been reading up on the ranges between ball pythons and retics and they're almost exactly the same, pretty much 50 to 60% humidity. And this guy is in a feeding mode. I'm not sure how close I want to get to this guy because he's been finally eating some rats after a really long fast. And let's see if I can kind of See if I can get kind of get him out of a uh, feeding mode here. <laughs> he's always been a little bit skittish, so he's not, you know, the, the the most friendly snake. When he was young, he was really super scared of me. He would just kind of go ballistic every time I touch him or get near him. He's definitely gotten a lot better. I've been trying to work with him, but he's he's still. It seems like you know it's pretty much the personality of the snake. But I would say on this one, uh, it's pretty much the same. Where you look on the top, you can see that it's it's pretty much forming a mat so if you move it around and, and it kind of just fluffs all over the place then you know there's not enough humidity I really like to keep a solid mat and if you dig down into it you can see on this one the further you dig it's definitely darker and, and kind of wet down on the bottom and that is pretty much perfect because because really if you have too much water in here and they sit on something wet all the time they can get scale rot they can get respiratory infections they can, <laughs> they can get you know into a lot of problems if you have too much humidity in your tub and this guy is gonna get in trouble if he, <laughs> if he comes out of that tub so another thing I've been struggling with as far as having too much humidity in these tubs or not changing the substrate as often is pretty much that you need to is gnats you get gnats breeding like crazy and at one point I had this whole infestation of these little is like a little fungus gnats all through my room and pretty much how I got rid of them is I went through and I changed all the substrate pretty much all at the same time which is a really big job to kind of to get it all out and the problem is is I do you know one section one week and another section another week and you get to the point where the gnats would go from one section to the other that you weren't cleaning and you were like always chasing the gnats and I finally got to the point where you know if, if you just go through and do them all then whoa <laughs> he's a little bit skittish and then finally, you know, I have a few gnats in here, but it's it's not too bad. This guy is still a little bit skittish, and it's, I think it'd almost be best if I just kind of handled him a little bit, so he knows that uh, <laughs> I'm not gonna hurt him. He's you know, when he was young, he was incredibly skittish. You know, it's, for some reason, the guy I got him from didn't really handle him at all, and when I picked him up, he was like snapping at me and peeing and just like flying away like crazy. He was just a crazy snake when he was young. And he's finally chilled down quite a bit, but he's always kind of had this, this skittish streak to him. I don't know if I, don't know if I want him over by the rats. Let's see if I can guide him back in the tub. He is a really good looking snake. This is actually a lavender albino. Uh, he is 37.5% super dwarf. 50% Jampea dwarf and only 12.5% mainland. So he's almost completely dwarf and super dwarf, which is pretty cool. So he won't really get much bigger. He's about close to 30 pounds. And that is really the perfect size for a retic for me. I don't really like retics to get too big that I can't handle them by myself. I <laughs> kind of where Lucy's at right now. So this is my biggest snake. This is Lucy, and you can tell she is definitely looking for a rat. And I don't want to, <laughs> I don't want to get too close to her without telling her that hey, I am coming in. <laughs> don't bite me. I want you to be in handling mode, not feeding mode. So she switches over pretty good once I just kind of touch her a little bit. She's okay. So this girl, actually, believe it or not, she weighs about 70 pounds. She's a really big girl, and this this enclosure is is kind of interesting the way the humidity works. This side essentially stays dry over here. It's it's pretty dry. It's a little bit wet underneath, but pretty dry on top. And then over on the other side, it is really super wet over here. And essentially, what happens in this one is it condenses for some reason over on this side because 
the heat panel kind of stops right here. She has an overhead kind of a radiant heat panel and then it rains down over here. I don't know if you can see that on the back, but it just kind of condenses and rains down. And then over here it gets super wet <laughs> on the side. I don't know how well you can see that, but that is, it's almost too wet over here and too dry over there. So what I do is, is I try to <laughs> keep from getting bit with this crazy girl and then kind of mix some of this stuff over there and kind of mix it back and forth together. And it's always seems like it's an interesting challenge in this tank, you know, having a dry side and a humid side. All right, so when it comes to humidity in your ball python enclosure, I would say probably the number one problem is having too much humidity. Let me tell you, you can run into a lot of problems. Not only can you have problems with fungus gnats, which is kind of one of the biggest problems I've had lately here in the last couple months, but you can also run into respiratory infections. I would say that is probably the number one thing with ball pythons. As a matter of fact, I've seen a lot of people who swear that, that they say, you know, ball pythons should be kept at a really low humidity, except for when they're going into the shed, just to avoid the possibility of respiratory infections. But, you know, I found that if it gets really, really low, they pretty much go off the feed, and then I have other problems as well. And I always like to keep, you know, probably air on the side of caution to keep it a little bit lower on the low side as far as humidity for my ball pythons and then really crank it up like when they're going into shed like Bobby here is going into a really hard shed I'd say well, probably within the next day or two she'll clear up and then you know a couple days after that she'll probably shed and you definitely want to make sure you have enough humidity in your tubs when they're going through a shed so that's pretty much it thanks for watching and I will see you next time